The Analysis of Wood Ash, Determination of the Anions Attention, in these experiments irritating, toxic and caustic compounds are handled. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the replication of these experiments. When acid is added to wood ash the formation of gas is obvious. A large portion of ash consists of carbonates so the gas should be CO2. For the test, saturated calcium hydroxide solution is filled into a fermentation tube. Barium hydroxide could be used instead. Then a sample was added to a test tube. 10% sulfuric acid was added and the tube closed immediately with the fermentation tube. The calcium hydroxide reacts with CO2 to form insoluble calcium carbonate, which is a proof for the presence of carbonates in the sample. When adding the acid, a slight smell of hydrogen sulfide was noticeable. So a watch glass was put on top of the beaker before adding the acid. Then 10% sulfuric acid was added. Hydrogen sulfide is formed when sulfides react with acid. As an example, sodium sulfide is used in the equation. Usually, lead acetate paper is used to find out if hydrogen sulfide has formed. In this case, paper was used that had been soaked with lead nitrate, but the reaction is practically the same. The lead ions in the paper react with hydrogen sulfide to form lead sulfide, which leads to the paper turning brown or black. The formation of hydrogen sulfide is a proof that sulfides are present in the sample. To test for other ions, one gram of the ash was crushed into a fine powder and added to a beaker. To this, three grams of analytical grade sodium carbonate and 50 milliliters of distilled water were added. Then the mixture was stirred and heated to a boil for 10 minutes. Here the ions of the salts are separated, leading to the formation of insoluble carbonates of the metal ions, while the anions stay in solution as the sodium salts. After cooling down, the solution was filtered off. The filtrate is called soda extract and contains all the anions of the sample. For obvious reasons, this can't be used anymore to test for carbonates. For the first test, a sample of the soda extract was acidified with diluted nitric acid that had a concentration of 12%. Next, a 0.1 molar solution of silver nitrate was added. Silver nitrate reacts with halide ions to form insoluble silver salts. Only a slight cloudiness became visible, but this is already a proof for the presence of halide ions. This can happen when too much nitric acid was added. That's why usually one or two drops of diluted ammonia are added to increase the amount of precipitate. The same effect could be observed when diluted ammonia was added in the next step. The addition of ammonia is also useful to differentiate between the halides. When diluted ammonia is added, the chloride goes into solution while forming the silver diamine complex. The bromide would need way more ammonia, while the iodide would not dissolve at all. So only chloride was present in the sample. Next, a sample of the soda extract was acidified with 10% hydrochloric acid. Then a 0.1 molar solution of barium chloride was added. The barium chloride reacts with sulfate ions to form insoluble barium sulfate, which is a proof for the presence of sulfate in the sample. Next, a sample of the soda extract was acidified with concentrated nitric acid and a few additional drops were added to make sure a large excess of the acid is present. Then it was heated for 5 minutes in a boiling water bath which causes reducing ions like bromide, iodide or sulfides to be oxidized by the nitric acid. If these would be present, this would lead to nitrous oxides and the corresponding halogens being formed.
Then the sample was removed from the water bath and a somewhat large amount of a saturated solution of ammonium heptamolybdate was added. The yellow color might be an indication that phosphate is present, but the test is only seen as positive when a yellow precipitate is formed. To force the formation of the precipitate, a drop of diluted ammonia was added. Then the sample is left to sit for a few minutes. When no precipitate is formed, more drops of ammonia could be added as long as the nitric acid stays in excess. By heating, the speed of the formation of precipitate can also be increased. The solution turned only a bit cloudy, so three drops of diluted ammonia were added while heating. The heptamolybdate exists in equilibrium with the molybdate. This can react with phosphate ions to form ammonium molybdophosphate, which then precipitates. When ammonia is added to the acidic solution, it is neutralized and the concentration of ammonium ions is increased, lowering the solubility of the complex. So the precipitate is a proof for the presence of phosphate ions in the sample. In the wood ash, carbonate, sulfide, chloride, sulfate and phosphate were found. These are for sure not all the anions, but the most abundant ones in ash. This was the determination of anions in wood ash. I hope you enjoyed, please rate and comment. If you want to see the determination of the cations in wood ash, you can watch my video here, or you can watch my latest video here. A big thanks to my supporters on Patreon.